This is an example taken from our textbook. It is example 2.1 and it is for a DC motor. A four pole shunt wound DC motor draws 12 kilowatts from a 240 volt supply while operating at a full load. The shunt field and armature resistances are 150 ohms and 0.25 ohms respectively. The armature is lap wound and rotates at 1000 revs per minute. Calculate the following if the useful flux is 40 milli Weber. And then we've got some questions to answer. Now, in the first question, we need to calculate the magnitude of the back EMF induced in the armature. So let's just point out all the information that is given. First of all, this is um, a, a four pole machine. So therefore we have two pairs of poles for a four pole machine. The motor draws 12 kilowatts. So therefore the input power into the machine, power in, uh, machine, uh, motor is always rated at output power. And but this instance, the motor draws 12,000 watts in order to operate. Just remember that a motor, it's electrical in and mechanical out. Okay, then we have a, a 240 volt supply that, and that's so that the motor can actually switch on and operate. Then we have an armature resistance of 0.25 ohms. RA is 0.25 ohms. Then we have a shunt resistance. R shunt is the bigger resistance. Armature resistance is the smaller resistance. R shunt is 150 ohms. Then this machine is lap wound, so therefore the number of parallel paths is equal to two times the number of pole pairs. So it's going to be two times two equals four. And we have a speed of 1000 revs per minute. And what else do we have? We have the flux per pole, which is uh, 40 milliweber. Now to convert milliweber to weber, I can just divide 40 by 1000 and that will become Weber. We must convert milliweber into Weber. And uh, they also want us to calculate uh, the number of conductors per slot at a later stage, but we'll worry about that later. Okay, so let's start off. First of all, uh, it's important to note that this is a shunt wound motor. So the formula to calculate the generated EMF will be E is equal to V minus IA times RA. There is no uh, shunt brush resistance, so that's the formula we'll be using over here. Now you'll notice that we do have the terminal voltage of uh, 240 volts. Uh, we do have the armature resistance, but we need to calculate the armature current. Now to calculate IA for a motor, for a motor, it draws current from the supply. Uh, most of the current gets drawn by the armature, and a small amount of current goes through the shunt resistor. So therefore, IA is going to be equal to IL minus I shunt. Right, now what you'll notice is that we don't actually have any of the uh, values for current, but what we do have is we have the power. So to calculate the supply current, it's going to be the input power over voltage minus, and to calculate the shunt current, it's going to be uh, V shunt over our shunt. Now your shunt winding is a parallel winding. It's connected in parallel. So therefore uh, it's the same as the terminal voltage. Okay, as you can see, I've run out of space here. So I'm just gonna do it down at the bottom. Okay, so the input power is uh, 12,000 watts over the voltage of uh, 240. Okay, let's put that inside brackets. Minus, now to calculate I shunt, it is the terminal voltage, which is the same as the shunt voltage which is 240, divided by the shunt resistance, which is the bigger resistance, it's 150, and the values we get there for the supply current, it'll be uh, 50 amps, minus the current through the shunt winding of 1,6 amps. So therefore, the armature current, IA, will be equal to 48,4 amps. Okay, now we can substitute that, uh, 48, comma four amps the armature resistance is the smaller resistance it's not comma two five so therefore our generated emf 
it's going to be uh, 227 comma 9 volts. Now you'll notice that for a motor the EMF is smaller. Your EMF is generated by the armature assembly and your terminal voltage is used to ensure that the machine can operate. All right, the next question. We need to calculate the total number of uh, armature conductors and in this equation we use the EMF equation which is equal to 2 times uh, the number of pole pairs times the speed times the total number of armature conductors multiply by flux which is the field strength C the number of parallel paths um, over and 60 okay now in order to calculate the total number of armature conductors we have to manipulate the equation to get Z on its own so it's going to be E multiply by C times 60 all over 2 times the number of pole pairs times the speed in revs per minute times the flux per pole in Weber. So we substitute our EMF from the previous question. The EMF was uh, 227 comma 9. The number of parallel paths is lap wound. So it's going to be 2 times the number of pole pairs. So therefore the number of parallel paths will be 4 times uh, 60. Then it's going to be over 2, which is a constant, the number of pole pairs. It's a four-pole machine, so there are two pairs. The speed at which the machine operates in revs per minute is 1,000 revs per minute. And the field strength in Weber, I'm just going to write it as a fraction, 40 over 1,000. So therefore, the total number of armature conductors is 341,85. For the units, I'm just going to write uh, conductors in short. All right, the final question. Calculate the number of conductors per slot if there are 50 slots. Now, it's important to note that the total number of armature conductors, Z, is equal to the number of slots multiplied by the number of conductors per slot. Okay. So we've got Z. Z is, um, let me just take the value from the previous question, 3, 4, 1, comma, 8, 5. Okay. There are 50 slots, so we can substitute 50 there. And then to work out the conductors per slot, all we have to do is take 341 divided by uh, 50. And therefore, the number of conductors per slot is going to be equal to... 6837. Now you can't have um, half a conductor or, or a slither of a conductor. So what we do in this instance, we just round it up and we say that there are seven conductors per slot. Okay, thanks very much for watching this video.